Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you once again for this opportunity to come together and to fellowship with one another. Thank you, Father, for each and every one that's here tonight, Lord. We thank you that no one sits in here in pain or in discomfort. We thank you, Lord, for your healing power manifesting in their bodies, Lord. We thank you, Father, that whatever they needed when they came in, they have already received it, Father, in the name of Jesus. And Father God, as we study your word tonight, we thank you for revelation, knowledge flowing freely, unhindered, uninterrupted by any satanic or demonic spirit. We thank you that we decrease and you increase. All of you and none of us. Anoint every ear in here to hear your word, every heart to receive it, and every spirit to contain it. I ask, Father, that you think through my mind and speak through my vocal cords all that you'd have me to say to these your sheep. And Father, we'll be ever so mindful to always give you the praise and always give you the glory. It's in Jesus' name, and everyone in agreement, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Well, we're teaching on the subject of living victoriously over fear. We as believers do not have to be overcome by fear. We have many opportunities for fear to overcome us, but we have authority where we don't have to be overcome by fear. Amen? Are y'all in agreement with that? Amen. All right. The world says, I've, I've heard people in the world say that some fear is okay. But I'm here to tell you no fear is okay. Because it's not from God. Second Corinthians, Second Timothy 1 and 7 says, God did not give us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Power, love, and a sound mind is what we use to overcome fear from the world. Amen? We're talking specifically about getting to the root of the matter. Uh, a lot of times, fear may be in a person's life because of something that has happened in the past or some trauma or something like that has occurred, and it can cause fear to be in your life. The first thing that we talked about, because we we're talking about identifying some major things that may cause a person to become fearful. The first thing that we identified was the thought of death. The thought of death has attached to it a fear of death. And we went through the scriptures and we seen where Jesus has released us from the bondage of the fear of death. That's Hebrews chapter 2 verses 14 and 15. So we don't have to be in fear of death because Jesus defeated death. Through his resurrection, he defeated death. And because he has defeated death, we also have defeated death. Now, the next one that we're going to look at tonight is parental influence. In many cases, I'm reading from the syllabus. Do you have any more back there, Flo? Because Sherry and them can get one. We're talking about identifying things that can cause fear to be in a person's life. And we're talking about parental influence. I guess she's going to get y'all. Oh, oh, she's going to get y'all. Uh, I thought it was going. Man. In many cases, I'm reading from the syllabus, in many cases, fear can be a dominating influence in a person's life because of the fear that was learned from their parents. Fear can be taught to children. And if, they, and if they're not delivered from that, they can carry that fear right on into adulthood. And it can be affecting you now because of what you learned then. Flo, do you have any more back there? Praise Jesus. Rande Bokosa Dadaki. Hey, Willie, in the office back there, there's some books in a paper. Oh. 
I see you interrupting. The most important thing that parents can do for their children, short of leading them to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, is to give them the warmth and security of parental love. Parents ought to love their children. See, Terry, I have no more control than you. You know what I mean? <laughs> My wife don't listen to me either. <laughs> Online with it. One of the best. <laughs> Y'all having too much fun with that now. The laughing is over now, okay? <laughs> Beverly. <laughs> he must be married. That must be your wife. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, married for all right. Uh, now don't laugh too hard. Now you. Okay. <laughs> well, anyway, all right. Back to the message. Now y'all don't have enough fun with that. <laughs> One of the most important things that we can do for our children is show them. Uh, first thing is lead them to Christ. That's the most important thing you can do. But you need to show them warmth and and security. Children need to have a secure home and a loving home. All right. However, there are two specific parental habits that parents should avoid, and that is overprotection of their children and dominating their children. Both of these can cause a child to be fearful. And we're going to talk about both of them. We're going to start with an overprotected parent. An overprotected parent can cause their children to become fearful through the fearful words that they use to forbid their children from participating in certain things. I've, I've heard parents say, well, you know, I don't want you playing football, talking to their young child, their boy child, because you can get hurt. And then they start naming how they can get hurt. Well, what that is doing, that's putting fear in that child. Because I'm going to tell you something, they're going to sneak and play anyway. Okay? But this time, because you've said that, they're going to play in fear. And every time uh, they start playing, what's going to happen is they're going to tense up because of fear. And that's one of the worst things you can do when you're getting hit. They even say in, 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 in car accidents, the reason why drunks don't get hurt is because they all laid out and laid back. They ain't tensed all up. Where another person that's sober, they tense up when the accident happened and they get hurt worse. Yeah. So they say not being tense helps, helps to uh, keep you from being hurt as bad. Well, when you talk about how this child can be hurt and this and that and telling them that they shouldn't do it and this could happen, that can get broke, this can come off. You know, you putting fear in that child. So when they start playing, because like I say, they're going to sneak and do it anyway. When they start playing, then they're going to play tensed up. They're, they're not going to even have fun. They're going Every time a situation occurs in the game that they're playing football, where they're playing football and they see a potential being hurt, they're going to tense up. And they're probably going to get hurt worse. But the most important thing is that you've just injected fear into their hearts. Are you all okay with that? All right. I gave the example. For instance, the fearful, overprotected parent who forbids her child from playing football can cause far more harm to the child's emotional development through their repeated suggestions of fear of what could happen to them than the damage done if the child's physical body was injured. Children's bodies can easily absorb the falls, burns, and even broken bones far better than the emotions than, than their emotions can absorb their parents becoming upset or hysterical over their experiences. The physical body heals quicker than emotional hurt. It takes God to heal that emotional hurt. It takes God to get rid of that fear in a person's life. And we have to be mindful. A lot of times when parents are overprotective, it's done out of love, okay? But you still have to be mindful of being too overprotective. You know, you need to give them some leeway. You need to let them have some fun. Because overprotecting them can keep them from having fun. You know? See, 
during my day, they was trying to get us out the house. <laughs> it was a bunch of us, so they were trying to run us out, you know. But we had fun. We, we enjoyed ourselves, you know. We, 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 we had the opportunity to be children. Now children has to, have to become adults because of the, the parent is not the adult. Most of the time the parent is not even home. All right? Praise Jesus. The physical body heals quicker than the emotional scars left by fear. I'm still reading from the syllabus. Although most parents may be overprotected of their children because of love and concern they ha that they have for them, parents must still guard against becoming so protected of their children that they not only rob them of their playtime, but they also inject fear into their hearts that can follow them all the way into adulthood. So we have to be mindful, even grandparents, especially grandparents, because sometimes they can be really overprotected. And we have to be mindful that we don't over protect our children, children, keeping them from enjoying themselves, having fun, because a child need to have fun. And parents, I need to say this too, even if you're listening online, it's all right if the boy gets dirty. Okay, that's why we got washing machines and that's why they take baths. You know, because they say, well, don't get them clothes dirty. How is he gonna have fun? without getting dirty he's you know give him some clothes that he can get dirty in to put on you know don't see we stop them we stopping our children from enjoying themselves you know now of course we you know we need to tell them you know things that can happen in the dirt you know i know they got germs but you got germs in the house too you know let them let them have fun all right <laughs> the next thing that we're going to talk about is the dominating parent an angry, explosive parent who dominates the lives of his or her child can create fear in that child that may affect them throughout their adulthood. An angry, dominating parent who critically pounces upon every failure in the child's lives, in, in, in their children's lives, can also create fear and insecurities in their children. I've seen parents that any little mistake the child makes, they pounce right on it. I've seen them get mad because they drop food in the, in the living room or on the floor, or drop a plate. But here's the thing. I've done all that as an adult. I've dropped food on the fo floor. I've broken plates, you know. We, we've done it as adults. But what I found out a lot of times is not that a particular incident. A lot of times parents done had trouble or had some things going on at work that they bring to the house. And when they bring it to the house, they still upset. So any little thing that the child does, they take it out on the child. Some men and women nowadays take it out on their spouse. You know, they they angry and they bring it home. But see, you got to leave all that junk at work. Home is a place where you should be happy to come and enjoy yourself and enjoy your family. All right? And especially men, we have to be the be the be the head we have to set the tone of our household you know and you can't come you can't rule your child through uh, uh, dominating them trying to create fear in them are you hearing what I'm saying I know one guy that uh, did that and he had his children so afraid of him you know and now that I know what it causes I I could imagine the fear that's in their life because he had them deathly afraid of him but that's not how you're to you know you, you we ought to discipline children okay there's a time and place to discipline them and you have to let them know that you are the parent okay sometimes parents make the mistake of the mistake of trying to be their friend instead of their parent you know you have to be you was put they they was given to you to be for you to be their parent to raise them and 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 uh raise them up in the admonition of the lord and and things like that and it's okay to have fun with your children but you have to you, you never should cross that line to where they feel so comfortable with you they talk to you any kind of way where they disrespect you a lot of that comes from trying to be a friend to them all right but also you're not to dominate them you're not to to make them so afraid of you 
that they won't even come talk to you. A lot of children are being hurt now because they're afraid to come and talk to their parents. Are y'all all right with that? Children need correction, but they need it ministered with the proper attitude. We're going to Proverbs 19 and 18. Proverbs 19 and 18. Now, on the flip side of this, we have some parents that won't discipline their children. And that, that results in tragedy. It, the Bible does say that. It says that when you don't discipline your child, you, 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 you don't love them. Because discipline is for correction. Not punishment, but it's for correction. And if you love anybody, you're going to point out their, their wrongs and, and, and help them to get on the right path. Well, with children, sometimes they need a little assistance. <laughs> and that's why we've been given this extra padding in the back. <laughs> a lot of the times I believe my personal opinion this is my personal opinion this is James chapter 1 verse 1 <laughs> not James in the Bible but Pastor James <laughs> I believe that the re I know that the reason why they came out with this law of not uh, spanking your children is because people went overboard with it you know they, they I mean they went to punching them and be abusing them hitting them in the face with switches and all that the yeah see that one she said one lady threw her baby against the wall out of anger you know so so people like that need to be jailed okay but there also is a place where we have to spank them because we are still responsible for their actions even though they limited your Discipline, discipline, disciplinary actions. You're still responsible for their actions. So there. So I, I encourage parents. If you do it according to the Word of God, I believe that God protects their parents. Parents, when you do it correctly. All right. So and and we've been given padding back there. Now in my day, if they'd have had the law out, my dad would have been in jail too, because I felt like I was child abused. It's when when it was time to be punished, most of the time he loved me without punishing me. But there were times I deserved it. You know what I mean? I know I deserved it. But I, what I'm saying is, he I used to get uh, they they call it spanking. I used to get whipped with the the uh, barber strap and one that the double strap where they used to. He caught me in the tub one time. Lord, while I was wet, Lord Jesus. <laughs> he, I didn't do the dishes like I was supposed to but you know what after he caught me that time before I laid down every dish was clean because <laughs> I didn't want that experience never again <laughs> and most people that came up in my era they, they were uh, they're, they're, they're pretty good people in that way because they were disciplined it's, in these new generations is where the children is is talking to the parents in any kind of way because during my day when adults was in the front room talking or in the guest room talking they didn't have to say nothing they just look at you you know it was time for you to get out of there now even if you tell the child to get out they say well this is my house too you know they I mean, they don't have no respect now okay Proverbs some of them Proverbs 19 and 18 it reads chasten your son while there is hope and do not set your heart on his destruction. Now what this verse is saying is that children need to be disciplined at an early age. Discipline should start at an early age. You can't wait till a child get in their teen and then decide you want to spank them. They're going to stand toe to toe with you now. So you have to start early. Uh, Proverbs 22 and 6, I believe it is, says train up a child while he's young and he won't Train up a child in the way that he should go while he's young and he won't, uh, when he's old, he will not depart. Thank you for helping with that verse. It's Proverbs 22 and 6. And what that's saying is we need to start early with our children. Now, you, now a child one year old, you don't start beating on them, okay? But you need to discipline them. You need to, like, if, if a child one year old is, is walking and they stick their hands or something in a, in a, in a socket, you know, you can just tap them and let them know that's not 
the right thing to do because that'll kill them. All right? But don't knock them with your fist. Don't hit them. Don't slam them against the wall. And don't use an object to uh, beat them with. All right? We got to have balance there. Parents, parents are to chastise their children. Parents are not to chastise their children unduly out of anger, causing them to lose heart and give up. A lot of children today do, don't have any uh, ambition. They don't have any goal. They don't have any uh, motivation, as maybe I could use that term. They just want to sit around. They're all in a depressed state. And a lot of times it's because their parents are dominating them. Their parents are uh, beating them for no reason, just, just hitting them all upside the head for no reason. You know, you can't do that because you can cause your child to become discouraged. The Amplified Bible, it's, it's in your syllabus. It reads, discipline your son. It's the same verse, Proverbs 19 and 18. Discipline your son while there is hope, but do not indulge your angry resentments by undue chastisement and set yourself to his ruin don't just beat him because you're angry he didn't he or she didn't do nothing but you angry now because maybe you didn't do your job on the on on your job and your boss hollered at you so now you're gonna come and exercise your authority you're gonna you're gonna come this my house and you're gonna dominate and 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 take it out on your children well you can't do that all right, you can instill fear in their hearts. Parents, I'm still on the syllabus now. Parents are not to try to dominate their children by angrily chastising them for nothing. This only causes them to become fearful and discouraged. Parents are not to break their children's spirit. Colossians 3.21 in the Amplified Bible, Paul said, Fathers, referring to parents, do not provoke or irritate or fret your children. Do not be hard on them or harass them, lest they become discouraged and sullen and morose and feel inferior and frustrated. Do not break their spirit. You can harass your child. You can you can you can come and just be, and, and 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 be angry anger angrily toward them for no reason, and you can break their spirit. And, and all you have to do is watch. They, maybe they were A students. Now their grades are dropping. They're starting to isolate themselves from other children. They won't go outside and play. Their spirit is broken. Their spirit is broken. We can't do that. And if you are one of those who parents did that to you, you can have fear instilled in you from that now. You could have brought that up through your adulthood. Because you got children, because I've talked to adults that say, man, my parents abused me. I was, I was afraid, I was afraid of my parents, you know what I mean? That's not good, you know? That a child shouldn't be afraid of you. They should respect you, but they shouldn't be afraid of you. Amen? Amen. Children must be handled with care. Children need firm discipline administered in love. You can be firm, but you can do it in love. Parents should discipline their children in such a way as to let them know that nothing has changed and that they, the children, are still the object of their parents' love. When you discipline a child, you need to tell them why you're disciplining them. Because parents, like parents like to say stuff like, don't do that. And the child will say, why? Because I told you so. Don't do it, and then child, parent, child may say, well, you do it. Well, don't do what I do, do as I say. That's wrong. That's wrong. You don't do that. And then if you're going to discipline the child, let them know why you're disciplining them. And then after you discipline them, go and talk to them and let them know, you, I still love you. I still care about you. You're still the, the apple of my eye. But I did that because you did this. And this would get you in trouble. Oh, man, you know what that'll do for that child? They'll recognize that mom or dad is not mad with me. They were just trying to help me. But when you do it in a way where you just angrily and you dominating and you beating them up and don't tell them why, you can instill fear in that child. And that fear can follow them right on through adulthood. 
Amen. Parents are to build up their children even in times of correction. To do otherwise is to risk leaving lasting fear scars on their emotions. Lasting fear scars on their emotions. And you know who the only way they can receive healing is through God. Even if we go back and apologize later on in life because some parents have done that apologize to their child once they become an adult of how they treated them and the child may forgive you that you know as an adult they may forgive you but those scars are still there only God can heal those scars amen so we have to listen children are fragile especially nowadays we need to we need to listen to them when they talk to us we need to be we need to be uh, supportive of them we need to uh, spend time with them but we don't need to dominate them. We don't need to chastise them every time they do something wrong. If, if somebody chastised us every time we did something wrong, somebody put their hands and whooped us every time we did something wrong, most of us adults will have scars all over us because we mess up all the time. Okay? They human. They gonna mess up too. You know, they gonna mess up too. So don't just, just because you angry, you know, if you're so angry where you got to, you feel like you're about to hurt your child, leave. Leave. Never discipline a child while you're angry. One reason is you're stronger than you normally are because of that anger. That adrenaline is flowing, and it's going to cause you to do more damage than you intended to do. And, and, and apologizing later ain't going ain't gonna to help. All right, so we need to be mindful of that. That's one of the ways that we can instill fear in our life, in, 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 in a person's lives, or we can have fear in our lives. Maybe we was brought up with parents who was overprotected or either dominating. Both of those uh, parental guidance can cause fear to be in a person's life. Amen. Y'all all right with that? Yeah. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this. Thank you for revealing to us how to live victoriously over fear. Thank you, Lord, that you reveal also to us where we are missing it, where we are making a mistake, Father. And you have instilled, you have given us your children to raise. They're your children. You've given us the opportunity to raise them. So we thank you, Father, that you are directing us and showing us how to raise your children in a godly atmosphere with godly love. And not just children, but how to treat each other with godly love, Father God. And we just thank and give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.